Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks for joining us here today, uh, another Good Friday at 2 p.m. Likeable Science is all about science and why it's so likable. Science is such a vital, interesting, dynamic part of our lives, and all of us, whether scientists or not, should look at it that way. To help me explore that today, I have Dr. Helen Spafford. Welcome, Helen. Thank you. And we're going to talk about a really fun and really <laughs> appealing thing in science today. We're going to talk about bed bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> but what, what I hope maybe we'll, we'll learn through this uh, exploration is that even though bed bugs are sort of a, a, a slightly gross and gruesome topic, mm -hmm. that, it, that they are really very interesting. There's a lot to be learned, very useful information, so mm -hmm. we can all live better lives, hopefully bed bug free lives, actually, hopefully, right? Hopefully, yes. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, Helen was born in Australia and uh, did a bachelor's and master's at Brigham Young University and her doctorate uh, studying uh, natural uh, crop pests for alfalfa at uh, Logan State University, Utah State University mm -hmm. in Logan, sorry. Uh, she then was, went back to Australia, worked at the University of Western Australia for some years, and then in 2009 joined the faculty of yeah. CTAR, College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, mm -hmm. uh, here at UH. She teaches in a wide variety of entomology courses, bugs of all sorts, types, yeah. and varieties. <laughs> uh, was recently named Entom Entomological Society Fellow of the Entomological Society, um, and has broad research interests, not only on the bed bugs we're gonna talk about, but on all kinds of agricultural pests, control of, of agricultural pests of various sorts, types, and varieties, right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Excellent, so um, before we jump, well, I, Actually, as we jump into it, what I want to do is ask you <coughs> my opening question here. So what is it that you really love about what you do here? So, um, yeah, my, um, my passion in life, besides insects, is teaching. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, I really enjoy teaching, and the thing that gets me super fired up about that is just seeing how um, good information can can help empower people to make good decisions in their lives and, and seeing students get really enthusiastic about what they're learning and um, and you know with with entomology um, seeing how people can go from a, the, the place of thinking that insects are gross and kind of nasty mm -hmm. to going wow they're really neat and and they do a lot of cool stuff and they're actually very helpful to to all life on earth Right, right. So. It, it is. It's great when you can <coughs> see that change in attitude and get mm -hmm. somebody who is not enthusiastic about some subject to realize like, there's a lot, a lot to explore lot here. To I, I, I want to learn more about this exactly. now, and now I'm excited yeah. and yeah, I'll charge ahead and yeah, yeah, understand that right, that bugs are a huge, huge part of the living world, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what is it? <coughs> they say that in a typical temperate forest, the mass of ants is equivalent to the mass of mammals. Oh, but yes, and in the, in the tropics, uh, it's actually more than all the mammals combined, so yeah. That's, I mean, that's a lot yeah. of ants because how much an ant com weighs mm -hmm. compared to an elephant is, uh, yeah. it takes a lot of ants to make one elephant. <laughs> it certainly does, <laughs> yeah. Excellent, excellent. So let's let's get get down to the, the nitty gritty here. Let's mm -hmm. get down to bed bugs. So what are these things we call bed bugs? Okay. So so bed bugs are an insect. Um, they have uh, six legs, like all other insects. Um, but they're insects that have uh, evolved a very and personal relationship <laughs> with people. Too close. Too close. <laughs> yeah. So um, they're they're considered a a, a pest and a and a public health problem because um, bed bugs. Um, their food is vertebrate blood or animal blood. So they um, will feed on, uh, you know, us in typically when we're sleeping, but not always at night. Um, and it, take the blood, and, and that's where they get their energy and the nutrients that they need to grow and to reproduce. Uh -huh. Okay. And so, um, so yeah, but they don't fly. Um, and uh, although they run pretty fast, they um, rely primarily on their animal hosts, people, to, to move them around and transport them around. And so um, that's another major um, part of the problem is that, that we're spreading bed bugs as we, as we move around and travel and, and that kind of thing. Right. I, I gather they're now considered pretty much a worldwide 
They are. Uh, problem, but I, I guess maybe they've, they've always been a, a, a worldwide problem, right? I mean, they have. Um, bed bugs have been, you know, uh, living with people um, for as long as anyone can remember. So uh, they, and in a worldwide basis, not just in developing countries or poor countries, but but even in the U.S. Um, prior to the World War II, um, you know, bed bugs were a, a common part of of people's lives here and they had to deal with bed bugs in their homes. And then there was the advent of um, insecticides, particularly DDT, and uh, these were very effective and people were spraying DDT in their homes and, and things like that. And, <laughs> um, and so that actually reduced the bed bug population um, in, peop in, in urban environments to almost non-existent level. Huh. And so people kind of forgot about them. And uh, as a consequence of that, um, uh, and, and the overuse of, of DDT and some of these other insecticides, uh, bed bugs started becoming resistant to the insecticides. And also, we see a change where people move around, started moving around a lot more and traveling. So uh, we have in, in movement within an area. But we also have international movement as well. And so that meant that bed bugs could hitch a ride uh -huh. a, a lot further than they probably used to be able to. And so the, and it may be slightly different varieties of bed bugs from one part of the world to yeah, the next. So, so we, f we find that, um, yeah, that, that uh, bed bugs, because they move around so much, you know, you'll, you'll get bed bugs from South America coming into Africa and from Africa into Europe. and and Europe into the U.S. and so there's a, there's quite a lot of mixing that, uh -huh. that, that goes on, but um, but you know sort of uh, in the last 10, 15 years now we see that that bed bug infestations are on the rise and um, particularly uh, in developed countries they're on the rise because we didn't have them for right. such a long time. So. We, we see bed bugs in places you would never expect to see bed bugs. I, I gather some of the uh, very high end hotels and all, they Absolutely. don't like to admit it, but they, they do have them they on occasion. Yes. Because people bring them in, and the hotel cannot keep yes. them out, basically. That's right, yeah, people bring them in. They have so. to, uh, and, and therefore, essentially, uh, and this may be sort of jumping ahead here, but the, sort of the bottom line is that sort of uh, eternal vigilance is mm -hmm. the price you must pay, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, but before we get get to that whole prevention end of things, so they bite us to get food, they mm -hmm. drink drink some blood for nourishment. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens when they do that, and what happens to us? Okay, so when the bed bug actually you know is on your arm or on your leg or on your back or wherever, um, it, it inserts a, what's called a piercing, sucking mouth part into um, your your into your skin, uh, much like. A mosquito does. Mm -hmm. So it's a very similar kind of um, mouth pot. And um, when they do that, they inject a saliva um, that sort of pre digests things, but they also, with that, inject um, an anticoagulant. Mm -hmm. So it helps stop the, your blood from clotting. Mm -hmm. And um, so when they, when they do that, um, often our, um, our immune systems will have a reaction to that. And so when they're done feeding, um, they, they withdraw their mouth parts and they scurry off into their little hidey place. Um, in the meantime, the saliva and the other materials, that they, proteins that they've injected in there um, to help them feed uh, remain in there. And our bodies react to that. And so some people have little or no reaction. You can just see a little puncture mark. It's just a tiny little red, red spot. Um, other people have uh, red welts and swelling, and um, and some can have quite large welts, um, and then other people go on to have a, a much more severe reaction. Some people can have um, uh, almost uh, like an asthma attack, uh -huh. and there have been some cases where people have gone into anaphylactic shock. Uh -huh. Now that's just from the bite itself. Um, also, often when they bite, they might um, accidentally, it's not on purpose, but um, in, in introduce some bacteria either from their mouth parts or from your skin that then gets in. And often because the, the irritation of the bite causes 
uh, and itch, itchiness, people will scratch, which also introduces bacteria. So there can be secondary bacterial infections that occur around a bed bug okay. bite. But they're not actually known to particularly transmit any disease. Mm -mm. It's not like mosquitoes carrying malaria or anything no, like that. No, absolutely not. So they've been tested fairly extensively, and to our knowledge, they don't transmit any um, disease like malaria or AIDS or you know any of those. So um, that, that you're not going to get those diseases from a bed bug. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, there's, there's some silver lining to this. A cloud, little right? bit. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And you say, though, they, uh, you said uh, earlier they uh, attack vertebrates, basically, so your dog, your cat. Yeah, uh, they, um, they prefer people, um, but uh, they will feed on uh, dogs, cats, uh, even birds, um, whatever is warm and breathing, basically. So if uh, you are alive, you are possible, uh, you know, and, and warm and exhaling, uh, Carbon dioxide, oh, they, they are attracted to the body heat, they're attracted to the carbon dioxide, and, and they will find you and feed on okay. you. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> no, we, we, uh, we were concerned some while ago, we moved into an apartment that had uh, bed bugs, mm -hmm. it turns oh, out, and yep. we were concerned because we have two uh, small parrots. Uh, and yep. We were very concerned because also it limits, the, those birds are so sensitive to uh, chemicals that it limits our, our treatment options. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, maybe that's actually a, a reasonable transition here. So, okay, well, let's say suddenly you, you wake up and you've got welts on you and it happens more than once or twice and you realize, mm -hmm. like, uh-oh, I've got bed bugs. What okay. do you do? Okay, so, well, the first thing you, you want to do is um, try to confirm that they are bed bugs okay. because there are a lot of other biting things that, that might be in, in somebody's home. So, you know, for example, there's head lice and there's fleas and ticks and, and other things that, you know, the, these animals that, that use um, our blood for, for food. Um, and the, the bites themselves, um, you, you can't really distinguish too well between, uh, say, a, a flea bite and a, and a bed bug bite. Okay. So you want to look in your home um, for other signs of bed bugs. And that would include the actual bed bug themselves, so you want to find one, mm -hmm. um, or you should look for some of the other signs there. So you get um, a confirmation. If you can't, but you find an actual bed bug or you're not sure, then um, you really ought to control, uh, call a pest control operator. They're trained to look in the, the places um, that bed bugs like to hide, and um, they can also if they find them, advise on the best control options. Right. And some of their signs will, will be little sort of dark specks, which are That's basically, right. I guess, their, their droppings and mm -hmm. their shed skins and things yeah. like that. So you'll find um, little brown um, flecks. Um, that's basically their, their fecal material, um, and the, you'll get those if they've been feeding. Okay? So it's basically the, the, the waste of their blood meal. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then each, each stage of growth, the bed bug needs to shed its skin and in order to, to get bigger. And so those cast skins can be found also um, ar around you know, their, the areas where they hide. And again, here on the screen, you've got, you've got a, a set of uh, bed bugs uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to uh, show, show the... Uh, Progression in, in growth and size, right from the, the I guess, the egg there. The, the egg is there on on the left, and then you've got um, the the nymphs um, that are uh, you know different sizes, and each one of the the nymphs will need to feed at in each stage. Uh -huh. So, so there's five at least a minimum of five times that they have to oh, feed okay. in order to get to the adult stage, okay. and you see the adult there on on the bottom. Excellent. Okay. Well, th this is very cool. We're, 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 we're digging into the bed bugs now, <laughs> get, getting serious about this. But we're going to have to take a small break right now, and then we'll be back and we'll, we'll talk more about bed bugs. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Likeable Science. Uh, Dr. Helen Spafford is with me here from UH Manoa, and we're talking bed bugs. Okay. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 
4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Aloha. My name is Kaui Lucas. I am the host of Hawaii is My Mainland here every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii at 3 p.m. I invite people who are doing interesting and inspiring things in our community to help us keep it local and keep it real. Tune in any Friday, 3 p.m. and also available on our YouTube channel and my blog, kauilucas.com. Hawaii is my mainland. Aloha. And you're back on Likeable Science here on Friday afternoon with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today in the Think Tech studios is Dr. Helen Spafford. And we're talking bed bugs today. Yes, indeed. A fun and delightful topic. <laughs> <laughs> we were, uh, but before I get back into bed bugs, I, I want to just do a little sort of science news flash. And this is actually a rather personal science news flash for me. Uh, I uh, work on. Uh, water issues and, and do informal science education around water and uh, my colleague just wrote that she was doing a workshop around our new water handbook that, that's making its way across the Pacific here uh, and one of the one of the demonstrations we do is to drop uh, different materials in the water and watch how they dissolve and how their dissolution varies with temperature of the water and so if you put some kinds of ink in cold water it dissolves away slowly but colors up the water if you drop it into warm water, it just vanishes. They yep. just, just, poof, it's gone. And I sort of assume, well, the ink's broken down. All its, its, whatever its chromatic properties are, are gone. And she just wrote back saying one of the teachers who she had done this with took that warm water with ink in it, stuck it in the refrigerator, and lo and behold, when it cooled down, the color was back. Oh. And I was, I was very intrigued to hear this and promptly tried to look up and find out why this is. And there are temperature sensitive dyes now which mm -hmm. you know the old classic old mood rings and all mm -hmm. but um i've been unable yet to really track this down as to why standard ink uh, what's happening what i assume must be some reversible chemi chemical reaction with sort of bi-stable state a more preferred low energy state in cold water that then flips to some other mm -hmm. colorless state but will revert when the, the uh, heat energy is gone anyhow i, I was blown away shows how sort of science is, is always around us. We're mm -hmm. always le learning new things. It's, it's what keeps science interesting for us, right? It does. There's always a problem to solve. <laughs> there we go. There it is. But we're, we're going back to bed bugs here. So we, we were showing before the, the break uh, pictures of bed bugs. And I, I, currently looking at that, at that image, people might not have a really good sense about size. So Helen very nicely brought some bed bugs in for us today. And they, they are dead. <laughs> <laughs> first question everyone asks is, you know, why are they dead? So, I wanted to go and show them to you here, and uh, let's see. Okay, we're maybe going to tilt them up just a little bit to get them up on yeah, so the camera can see them better. And, and okay, so we actually have several insects in this um, little petri dish here, um, and to to show that you know there are other insects that you may encounter that uh, look kind of similar to bed bugs. Mm -hmm. So these ones right here. Let me just sure. point these out. These ones right here are the actual bed bugs. So you can see that there's some difference in the, in the color, Oops. but typically mm -hmm. they're, they're brown. Um, and, um, and this one here, this is a, a nymphal cockroach. So um, bed bugs look very similar to, to um, the, the baby cockroaches, the ones that don't have the wings. And um, so th that can be confusing when, when you think, oh, maybe I've got bed bugs. It, okay. it, it could be a cockroach. Do they behave differently? Um, well, the, the, the nymph cockroaches can't fly, okay. just like bed bugs. They can't jump, just okay. like bed bugs. Um, so they'll scurry okay. away. Um, the, but you, you can tell the difference because the, the cockroaches tend to have longer antennae and, um, and a, a slightly different body shape. And you can right. see that you know, the, the head of the, the bed bug is a little more distinct than, than that of, of the cockroach. Right, they have sort of a separate head and then a ra rather globular round body, mm -hmm. whereas a cockroach is more just one bit, one straight oval. Yeah, is, right? and so we also have um, up here some, some ticks and then uh, a flea, which you can't see too well here, and then also uh, a head louse. So, and all of these you might find in your home, 
and they will feed on you. Okay. So, um, so th this then gets back to your why, why you should not just assume if you see wealth that you have bed bugs exactly. immediately. There could be other reasons for it. But so wh where you, you started, you, you look for them. And uh, where, where is it you look? Okay, so bed bugs, although they have the name bed bug, meaning, you know, right. they, they, and, and that's because they, they like to be in areas where their host beds down. And it could be a nest in the case of a bird or, you know, a, a, a puppy's uh, bedding area or something like that. But um, so it, it comes from bedding down right. uh, where, they, where the, the host sleeps. But they are not confined to just beds. Um, or the bedroom. They, uh, bed bugs have been found in bathrooms, they've been found in kitchens, they've been found in living rooms. Um, they, they can be found in, in many, many different places right, so within here, the home. Here on the screen now we have a shot of some bed bugs, an, yes. an infestation of some sort. Yes. Now, is, is this like a, a normal kind of thing you might find in your home or is this like an extraordinary case? Or? Um, this would be sort of uh, probably an early infestation. In okay. that in that picture there you can see some some adult bed bugs, you can see some nymphs. The little brown flecks are their their waste material. Um, and then you can also see some of the, the cast skins. Now this picture actually comes from um, straps that are on a on a box spring. Okay. So uh, on the bed, but you could see um, similar kinds of aggregations of bed bugs um, in, uh, in, a, in a sofa, or um, you'll even find them in electrical outlets, uh, under baseboards. Um, so pretty much anywhere in the home where people or the, or the animals, the hosts, hang out, that's a possible place that bed bugs could be. Right. So uh, one of the things I learned <laughs> through bitter experience is you you sort of lift up your mattress and look mm -hmm. around at the box spring at the underside of the mattress. Uh, if you've got fitted sheets, you look in the in the fitted corners. Yep, all particularly. the little seams and because those yep. are all nice sort of tight little spots where mm -hmm. they apparently feel secure and, mm -hmm. uh, and they're reasonably close to, to their meal. They're, you know, they got their their diner right next door, as yes, it were. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, all you can eat buffet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, and that, that image that was shown there, yeah, that was probably, there were probably a few dozen bugs in mm -hmm. that picture there, but uh, infestation might have... Thousands. Yeah, I was going to say hundreds, but yes, thousands. Uh, a large right. infestation could have thousands of right. bed bugs. And that's, that's then, you're, you're talking some pretty serious kind of stuff in mm -hmm. terms of, of, and getting rid of them is not easy. I mean, no. if, if you have just, see one, you know, one little bug and mm -hmm. you can grab it and maybe a, a little bit of material somewhere, that might, you might be able to pick that mm -hmm. often if, it, if you're lucky that's the, the one that first came in, mm -hmm. right? Yes. If you're unlucky that's the mom who's... Who's you know, already jump, laid her right, eggs. eggs, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have more, right? Exactly, yeah. So, um, and so where do they come from? I mean, how do they get in there? They don't just like magically spontaneously no, appear. <laughs> no, spontaneous generation right. has been disproved <laughs> some time right. ago. So. No, um, they, they're hitchhikers, and they are, you know, probably the world's best hitchhikers. Okay. So um, they will, because they like crevices and little dark places, um, they will get into bags. Um, they'll uh, hide um, in, in, on, on clothing, um, in, in seams and things like that, and, and they'll go with you wherever you go. So you can pick them up in, in many, many different places. And on the screen there, there's um, a number of possible different places that, that oh, bed bugs can be, if, if that's where they are, they could be picked up and moved to wherever you're going. So if we just avoid anywhere where, where there are people gathering, we can, we can probably avoid bed bugs. <laughs> probably. If you stayed in your bed bug free home forever, then you'd be probably just fine. But, yeah, but yeah. the point is basically, yeah, that they are almost anywhere and almost everywhere, mm -hmm. just greater or lesser extents, and you can pick them up and you can bring them in. And, exactly. And once they get established in your home, they become harder to Exactly. So, and your your earlier comment about you know catching a, an infestation when it's small, is um, really the ideal situation. And and this is the kind of work that that we've been trying to do is to educate people so that they know what to look for, yeah. and then if there is a possible um, infestation or or you see one on you, um, that you can um, get on that 
early and not let it go till it becomes an almost unmanageable situation. Exactly. Uh, we had moved into a, a condo that was furnished and had noticed that on an upholstered headboard, there seemed to be little sort of dark streaks on it. And oh. when we'd actually asked the, the landlady about that, and she said that the, she thought that it was ink from a pen that somebody had okay. you know, somehow spattered or something. Seemed slightly odd, but you know, not out of the question. It wasn't until later on, in, in looking and sort of studying a bit more about bed bugs, that we realized this, this was apparently these were little again bed bug mm -hmm. feces have been smeared around a little bit, and, and uh, so yeah, uh, uh, we eventually had to get rid of that head, whole headboard, of course, and of course. the rest of the bed yeah. and the mattress, and uh, but it's, which becomes very expensive. Yes, yes. right. Yeah. And then you still have to then treat the whole place. Exactly. Now, treatment options are many and varied, I guess. Yes, and some of them are effective and some of them are not. <laughs> and because of the increase in the, the bed bug problem worldwide, and particularly here in the U.S., there's been a lot of um, ineffective uh, but all natural kinds of options that have, have come on the market. I went into um, a, a supermarket here and found you know, uh, a, a bed bug treatment that mm -hmm. contained uh, tea tree oil. Well, you know, that's probably not going to be effective in terms of actually killing bed bugs. It might be a minor repellent, but mm -hmm. certainly not a, a long lasting solution. So, um, the, you know, if, if you do have a bed bug infestation, there, there are a number of things that you can do to help manage um, the infestation, drive it down, and possibly eradicate it. Um, by yourself, but it's unlikely you're going to eradicate it by yourself. You People really need to call a, a professional pest control operator, a licensed pest control operator, to, to come in and, and treat. Now, you can ask for um, uh, treatments that uh, don't, uh, are less harmful than, than others. So, um, the, the primary treatment that most pest control practitioners use is uh, in insecticides, so synthetic insecticides. But there are insect growth regulators, um, there's heat treatments, uh, there are some other options that, that could be useful. The, the things that we can do in our homes to, to help um, the pest control operator are basically to declutter. So because again, you know, bed bugs like to hide in places, if we've got a lot of clutter, in our, our living spaces, one that's going to make it really hard to detect a bed bug right. infestation if, if it's there. Um, the other thing is it's going to make it very hard for the pest control operator to effectively apply the management um, tools that, that they want to apply. So, so keeping our homes free of clutter um, and, and you know, particularly decluttering before a pest control operator comes in uh, can be very, very important. To, to managing this kind of problem. And also the clutter gives basically more crevices and cracks exactly. and places for the bugs yep. to hide and to stay away from any stuff that mm -hmm. is sprayed around if, yep. if, if there are agents that are sprayed. Yep. So, so if, if you do have to um, have a pest control operator come in and, and apply treatment, ask about the pros and cons of the treatments. So for example, um, pesticides can be uh, very effective. There's, there's residues that mean that those pesticides are going to, to last for some time. Um, but you know, there's there's some possible negative side effects, like you talked about with with your birds and you know our pets and things like that. But heat treatments, which can be very effective, they um, th there's no residue, and they actually to to kill the bed bug, it they have to come directly in contact with the the bed bugs themselves. And the other aspect of this too is that most treatments can be very effective um, against the nymphs and the adult bed bugs. But the eggs themselves are very, very resistant. Um, the, the, the little bed bug embryo inside that egg is extremely well protected. And so your, your pesticides, your heat treatments, all of those kinds of things aren't necessarily going to kill those eggs. So you need to be, again, very vigilant and have, um, probably have the pest control operator come back um, more than once um, to, to make sure that population is actually gone. Okay, we're going to have to take another break now. Uh, you're here on Likeable Science, and we're talking about the likeable science of bed bugs today. <laughs> uh, Helen Spafford from UH Monoa is here educating us about uh, the, the, how, how we deal with bed bugs as well as what they are. And we'll be right back after a short break. 
Hi, my name's Hilary Weinberg. I'm the host of The Whole Gamut on Think Tech Hawaii. See us live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. or on our YouTube channel to hear us talk about world affairs from Hawaii and beyond. See you then. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island. I work in the ER there. But on Tuesday afternoons, I get to come and spend 45 minutes to an hour with Jay Fidel and the Think Tech staff. They're terrific professionals. They help us to bring some of the leading, cutting-edge topics here across our state to you. So you can join us at our show on healthcare in Hawaii to talk with leaders from across all the spectrum of health in our state. Or you can join us for any other show where we talk about economic development or tourism or some really eclectic programs, too. So really, we'd love to see you here on our show. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for supporting us. And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm glad you've joined us again for another Friday afternoon of Likeable Science. With me today in the Think Tech studios is Dr. Helen Spaffer from Hi. UH Manawa, College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about bed bugs, a fun, fun and delightful topic. <laughs> but a topic that really actually speaks of how science needs to be part of all of our lives, Absolutely. right? Because you, you don't get rid of bed bugs by just wishing they're gone. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there are, but there are ways to get rid of them. And uh, uh, we're, we're seeing, uh, as you brought up earlier, that they're more and more of a problem uh, internationally now. Mm -hmm. And there are, I guess, hot spots around in the world and uh, uh, various uh, places in the world where they're, they're maybe more frequent than others. But it really, one of the messages I got from you earlier is it doesn't really matter. They're, they are pretty much everywhere. Anywhere people are going to be, there can, yeah. can and probably are bed bugs. And, and they don't discriminate. Right. Right. Um, it's not about clean or dirty. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not about, you know, uh, uh, being in an upscale area mm -hmm. or, you know, in, in a, a less affluent mm -hmm. area. Bed bugs really, they like everyone. Mm -hmm. So. But it's, it's a, one of the things that, that uh, I've come to realize after having dealt with them is it's, it's great to have like white sheets and, and, yes. <laughs> and white bedding because that, that just makes it much easier to spot, spot them. If, if you suddenly yeah. see that little black mm -hmm. blip, it's like, oh, you know, whereas a, a wildly patterned sheet, you're not going to notice no, that at all. Not, you know, as, so, not as well. Right, yeah. yeah, so much, much, uh, much easier. Hey, before we get back into this, though, I, I do want to do my uh, a little so-called so science mm -hmm. campfire story. And uh, just, these are just bits and pieces of, of weird science that I picked up over the years. And uh, this one's actually fairly recent. That uh, They've only recently actually seen this and confirmed it. Uh, it has to do with interspecies collaborations. And mm. in coral reefs, they have, have found that there are these large fish groupers that are uh, large predatory fish that live uh, around coral reefs and feed on the smaller fish, who of course run away in the small crevices of the coral reefs to avoid the groupers. Uh, the, uh, uh -huh, here, here we go, <laughs> the uh, uh, moray eel, on the other hand, lives in the coral reef mm -hmm. and sinuously slides through the nooks and crannies, also hunting for small fish, who of course flee out in the open ocean to avoid the moray. And the grouper will at times uh, approach a moray and actually, uh, through a, a sort of a, a series of gestures, invite the moray to hunt together. And they will go off together, uh, the moray often sliding in through the reef, the grouper outside the reef. Wow. And essentially, each one driving the fish in their environment into the other one's environment, so the fish have nowhere to hide, and, and apparently increasing their, their success. This has been filmed now a number of times in, in several different places, so apparently it's not an uncommon behavior. That's pretty impressive. It, it's, it's weird stuff, weird <laughs> stuff. Um, back to bed bugs. <laughs> <laughs> So, what, what's your, uh, let's say you're traveling, what, what do you do to try to avoid uh, picking up the bed bugs? Because that's clearly, prevention is the best cure, right? Absolutely, prevention is, is um, very important. So, when I travel, I actually um, have a little flashlight with me that, um, that goes with me. It's very useful for lots of other things, but whenever I go into a, a hotel room, I um, strip back the, the nicely made bed, I make a big mess of it, and I strip back the sheets, strip back the, um, the mattress cover and, and that kind of thing. And, and I do, I check um, the mattress, I check, lift up the mattress and check underneath for any, I, I don't expect usually to, to find an actual bed bug, but I check for the other signs. Right. So those, those droppings and the cast skins. Um, most hotels also have a fixed headboard 
um, on the wall. Right. I don't know if people have noticed that. So I tried to get my little flashlight back there to see if I can see any evidence. Underneath of, and behind Because that's, it. that's the ideal hiding place. Um, I also uh, kind of look under, under the, the pictures hanging on the walls and, and things like that. And um, yeah, just, just look in the drawers of the, the dressers. And I never put my uh, suitcase down on the floor. Um, most hotel rooms have one of those collapsible um, racks. Those are actually um, quite useful to, if they've got the, the metal legs um, to, to keep um, your, your bag off the ground and um, away from uh, any possible bed bugs. Right. You, don't, up you don't want to push that back up against a wall. No, you yeah. want to keep it away from the wall, right. and and then not put you know your dirty clothes on the floor, or right. you know um, another strategy when you're coming home too that you can use is to actually um, encase your your suitcase in a um, one of those big dark garbage bags. So if you think you might have encountered anything, you can put your your suitcase. Um, inside one of those big garbage bags, seal it up, and then let it sit in the sun and heat up. Because um, heating uh, up to you know about 120 degrees um, can actually kill bed bugs, the adults, the nymphs, and the eggs. Ah, that's, so, that's yeah. what I hadn't heard. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, I, I uh, when I travel, I do some of the same searches. You've given me some, some better, even better places I haven't been checking, yeah. so I, I will in the future. Yeah. But I hadn't realized that that's a, that's a great one to put it in a, in a black plastic bag and mm -hmm. seal it up and let it sit and, and bake yeah. for a while, because after a little bit, yeah, that's going to be hot in there. And, huh. Yep. And so, you know, even when you're not traveling, but you're, you're uh, around and about town, um, uh, you know, just, just being aware of your surroundings and then and then checking yourself mm -hmm. when you're um, uh, going places. My son actually came home from work one evening. He was working as a security guard, and he he came home from work and and uh, I think it was about two in the morning. And there's a little knock on the door, Mom. <laughs> so I came out. He said, "This was on my shirt, and it was a live bed bug that." he had picked up somewhere at work. He had not gone in anyone's home. He had not gone inside any offices. He had been p patrolling outside buildings. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, he had picked up a bit book. And, um, and we did a thorough search afterwards at 2 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we didn't find any others. So it was just that individual that, mm -hmm. but that's how easy it is to, to pick them up. Right. Well, if, if that individual happens to be a pregnant female, exactly. you, 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 you have the start of a big a, time trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing that's amazing to me about bed bugs is they can go for quite a long time without, without a meal, right? Mm -hmm. They can. Like as in weeks? Um, well, months. Um, and there's some evidence that they can survive um, for up to a year without, out, without feeding. Wow. So the adults. Huh. The, the nymphs need to, in order to grow, they, they, they need um, uh, food a little more frequently. Huh. So that's, that's, and then the eggs have some fixed period from when they're laid to when they hatch? That yeah, that usually, um, depending on temperature, that will usually happen within um, a few weeks. Okay. And, uh, and then you'll get the nymphs, which typically have to feed um, within a fairly short period of time after hatching. Uh -huh. Okay. So there, there is some vulnerability there, but if, if with the adults, if you've got a good number of adults around, you, mm -hmm. you may have a long wait. You could do, <laughs> yep. Um, what, just out of curiosity, what, what is your opinion of, of the, there are cedar-based sprays and, and treatments uh, that, that are specifically, say, there for bed bugs? I think, um, so I think you know, the, there's, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of alternatives right. out there. Um, some of them uh, can be effective in the, in the short term. Mm -hmm. If um, I, I haven't ever seen any papers about cedar, spray, cedar sprays or um, others, and, and looked at the, the the testing, the scientific evidence of those, but um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely the possibility that those and other essential oils could have toxic properties to bed bugs, but um, 
but I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. So okay. I don't really have an opinion at this point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's sort of what we used as an ongoing thing, mm -hmm. since we didn't want anything terribly toxic for our birds. Your birds, uh, yeah. In our place, we didn't want to have a guy coming back and spraying again and again and again, just because right. it's Right. You know, for example, um, you know, I know that there are some places where you cannot apply insecticides. And um, bed bugs, you know, you can make up a, a little squirt bottle of using um, alcohol um, and and squirt the bed bugs with with an alcohol spray, uh -huh. and if um, if you're extremely vigilant, then that can be effective. But you actually, again, you have to encounter the oh. the bed bug yeah, and really hit them. Yeah. and really hit them with yeah. it, and and then you know they can die. But. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then it sounds like w once you've had this, you need to keep checking very regularly mm -hmm. for at least some months. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't see any signs after some months, maybe after a year, you can begin to breathe some a sigh of relief. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's a long time. It is. And and there's other there's other tools that you can use to help with, with your, your monitoring. Um, online you can go to um, and find some very uh, inexpensive uh, bed bug monitoring traps that you can make at home just out of plastic containers. Um, those have been shown to be cheap and and effective at actually collecting um, bed bugs in them. If, if as, and so you put them at the base of your chair or your table or your, your bed and, um, and the bed bug crawls up and gets trapped inside and, and there you have a little monitoring uh -huh. station that it costs you a dollar. I see. And, uh, huh. Well, that sounds like a, wor a worthwhile investment if you're, if you're having an ongoing mm -hmm. issue. And, and, yeah, definitely. And, yeah, okay. Um, so what what are the what are the projections here? Sort of, we we have we know uh, uh, the world is getting warmer. It's getting a, a little more carbon dioxide, trapping a little more heat. In general, most insects do better when it's a little a little they bit do. warmer, at least. Mm -hmm. um, uh, particularly the freezing weather, I presume, pretty well shuts them down at least temporarily. To uh, some extent, yeah. Yeah, they're not going to breed and grow as fast. Mm -hmm. So warm weather, one would sort of predict, are probably going to help bed bug populations, which yep. is not great news for us. No. So we all need to be paying more attention then. Definitely. <laughs> um, uh, are there, are there, uh, ah, here we go, yes, all right. And, and they are indeed uh, considered a public health. They uh, are, yeah, threat. the the EPA and the CDC um, all consider bed bugs uh, an actual public health pest, even though they don't carry or transmit any diseases. Yeah. Um, the, the impacts of bed bugs are fairly uh, significant, both you know, the, the physical impacts from, from the bites and the possible infections, mm -hmm. but you know, there's, there's mental and social impacts as well that um, you know, having a bed bug infestation in your home uh, causes a lot of emotional distress right. for people. And, and then they can become um, isolated from, from others right. as well. Through support and... Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and then the economic impact as well is, can be quite substantial. So, you know, uh, d uh, getting rid of an infestation in your home can, can sometimes be very, very costly, not only in terms of the loss of the furniture like right. you did when you chucked out the bed and everything, but um, having a professional pest manager come in and, and, and treat the, your, right. your living areas can, can be very, very expensive. Yeah. So. Well, not, not exactly a, a light note on which to, to uh, end the show, but, <laughs> but nonetheless, very, very useful information. Uh, again, very applicable to our lives mm -hmm. and, and, and very, a very good example of how science does really play into all of our lives, uh, whether, whether we like it or not even, as a matter of fact. Exactly. <laughs> Well, Helen, thank you so much for being uh, on my show here. Uh, oh, thank you. You've been a wonderful guest here on Likeable Science, and I thank appreciate you. that. Well, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, you are very welcome, and I hope uh, you all will join us next week. Well, not next week, but uh, all, next year now, uh, every <laughs> Friday, 2 p.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Ethan Allen signing off. <laughs>